Hi, it's Dwyer, Richard Dwyer. For legal advice, you can look me up at richarddwyer.com. I'm an attorney here in California. You know, these days, everyone is a rapper. Everyone believes they're in the entertainment business, right? Everyone views themselves as an independent contractor on the hustle, right? I have to uh, applaud this new generation. Uh, they're not tied to corporate desks. They really view themselves as entrepreneurs. Boxers are no different, right? As a lawyer, I've come across a few entertainment and boxing contracts. You can imagine just being African American, how many people come up to me and say, hey, can you look at this contract? What are your thoughts about this? From both ends of the aisle, right? Aspiring entertainers, as well as um, entrepreneurs trying to start record labels, right? In boxing, as I said before, I've looked at a few contracts. Let me um, give some tips to both groups right here. If you're a young artist or boxer and you're on the prowl looking for success and you just want some advice on how to maximize your chances, just consider the following. Just a few points, very short video. The first is to have a team in place before you get involved in your craft whether it's entertainment or boxing right this is before you sign any contracts and it's cheap to do right what you should do is find a lawyer just tell them hey I just want to make sure that you're available to help me if I need for you to review a contract, right? Don't pay the lawyer anything. Just find out what the lawyer charges. Get an hourly fee, not a flat rate. Just say, okay, great. This way you'll know, you know, if I get a contract, if I get an offer, then I already have someone in mind and we've already discussed the legal fee, right? What you want to do too is figure out who your circle of friends are. You don't even have to tell them, right? This is while you're unknown. Just look around and mentally make a note. Who's with me? Who can I trust? Who's down for the cause, right? Because after you make it, there are going to be a lot of people out there who want to be your friend, right? So what you should do is literally, before you sign any contract, before you go down the road, just say to yourself, if I become wildly popular, right? The odds are slim, but they're out there. If I become widely popular, Who are in my core group of friends that I can trust to hang with? In other words, as Dr. Dre said back in the day, who's been down with me from day one? If I were you, I'd write down a list of those people, right? You don't have to tell them, but just make a note. Who can you trust? Who are your core? right figure that out before you make any moves right and just make a note to yourself that whatever happens going forward these people are the people you're gonna lean on for advice and when you just need to get back to a group that actually liked you before you became famous let me get to the next point you need to have a plan, right? This is all before you sign a contract. First, 
you need to promise yourself that you're only going to accept payment by check right understand you got a lot of people walking around with currency they're going to want you to accept currency enter into possibly oral agreements with them right you'll think it's just money for nothing until the person pops up and claims that they own a part of your career right and so you need to promise yourself up front that you're only going to accept payment by check there's a corollary when you get a check you need to further promise yourself that you're gonna make a copy of that check right in other words there needs to be a paper trail for your financial transactions right it can't hurt to have a copy of every check you receive this way if there's any question as to what someone paid you you can pull up hopefully the scan of the check because hopefully you not only copied the check but you scanned it to your computer if you're really savvy you've uploaded it to the cloud using Google Drive or something like that Dropbox right so you have a copy of the financial transaction further with regard to your career you need to have one bank account in which you deposit these checks and from which you make business related withdrawals that'll make your tax planning a lot easier that'll also give you the opportunity to figure out whether you're making money let me point out too that the holder of this account needs to be you not some friend not some manager right if you want to know how much money you have in the bank you should be able to pull it up online at the bank's website you shouldn't have to hunt down someone to ask them what's in the bank you should be able to quickly look online and see the debits and the credits right let me also make another suggestion and I'm not saying I followed all of these suggestions, right? This is literally the view from me being in my 40s looking back. You need to have a defined plan. In other words, you need to say to yourself, if I do get a financial windfall, if I do get some extra money, what am I going to do with it? You need to prioritize. In other words, for some people, they say, look, if I ever get a check, I'm going to buy mom a home. Right now, all I'm saying is you think clearly beforehand. You need to write that down. Right? You need to write down the things you're definitely going to do. Maybe buy yourself a home. Right? You know, pay off some debts you've accrued. I know how it is being a starving artist or a starving fighter not that I've been a fighter but you know what I'm talking about right you need to write down those top priorities because trust me if the windfalls start coming in and you're disorganized you're gonna be spending the money at the club you're gonna be spending the money on harebrained business schemes you didn't even know about when you got in the game right instead you should be spending the money on what you set out to do right if it's to buy mom a home buy mom a home what's the worst that can happen if your career stalls at that point you'll know that one of your top goals for getting into the business has been satisfied right so I would have a defined plan at a minimum have a high priority list also it goes without saying you've lined up an attorney if someone gives you a written contract I don't care how good-looking they are I don't care how wealthy they seem I don't care how luscious the circumstances are under which they've given you the contract just tell them I've promised my lawyer 
that I'm going to show it to her. Right? Just say, I have an agreement with my lawyer that every contract I get is going to be reviewed by my legal team. Right? If the other party balks at that, you'll know there's something wrong. Let me point out, too, that contracts are complicated things. Right? They have hidden provisions. Right? Venue provisions. Uh, forum provisions. Manner of resolution provisions. Some of these contracts, you're giving up your legal rights. Some of these contracts have liquidated damages provisions that limit the damages that you can get. Right? Have your attorney look at every written contract you're presented. And don't accept cash from anyone because then they'll claim that they had an oral agreement with you and understand those two are enforceable. Let's talk about the actual contract that you receive. And this particularly applies to boxers, right? Because you know the way it is. You're living on beans and rice in a rental with several other people, right? Someone comes to you, has a contract. The contract looks like more money than you have at the moment right you're thinking if I just sign this contract you know what I can overlook the other terms of the contract get paid who cares that the contract says that it's for a period of years right years and who cares that you know I'm gonna be obligated to fight several fights and that a lot of the discretion on who I fight is gonna be left to the other contracting party right my advice up front out the gate to anyone about to sign a contract and this is for new fighters or fighters well in the game who are thinking about signing a new contract my advice is that you have a buyout clause in the contract that protects you and the other contracting party in other words, just hypothetically, I'll just name a fighter. If I'm Guillermo de Gundia, and there is a chance that I am the very best in my weight class, there is a chance that I might ultimately end up on some premier media outlet, HBO, Showtime, you name it, right? And let's say that I'm dirt poor coming from Cuba, haven't really been paid a lot right then how could it possibly hurt me or the other party if I say you know what let's have a buyout clause in this contract that allows me to end this contract on a payment of the payment could be outrageous let's say five hundred thousand dollars right the point is simply this if you become a multi million dollar fire. If your dreams are realized and you want more control of your career, then that $500,000 payment gets you out of a multi-year contract. The other side gets their benefit of the bargain. You get your freedom, right? The balloon payment might seem like a lot when you're signing the contract, but understand, it's just an option for you, right? If you don't feel getting out of the contract is worth it, then great, stay in the contract. But your goal as a boxer is to maximize your opportunities. It's to maximize your options. So in every contract you sign, you should have a big buyout clause. Let me go one step further. Let's say I sign with a manager and I'm thrilled with that manager's work. Or I sign with a promoter, and I'm thrilled with that promoter's work. But let's say that when I signed, I was unknown. Now I'm a cash cow, contender or champion. What that buyout clause does is it literally gives you a chance to renegotiate the deal. You can say to your big name promoter, hey, you've done a great job for me. You know what? 
Let's talk about renegotiating the deal because I'm thinking about exercising this buyout clause. So then that promoter is going to have to rework the deal. So you're not getting the money that you were getting as an unknown. No, the contract's adjusted. So you're getting your market value as unknown after you become known. Right? So you want to have a buyout option in the contract. Another thing you want to have is you want the contract to be non-assignable. In other words, someone you trust is a boxing manager. You know the guy. You know you can trust him. You know you're down for the cause. Right? You sign with that guy. Suddenly, that guy gets an offer from some big fish who you don't even know. If your contract is assignable, that guy doesn't even need your permission to sell the contract, to cash out, sell the contract to the bigger fish, and then move to the side. Right? You should have the ability to determine who you work with. You should have the ability to veto any attempt to assign your contract. So it might not seem valuable in my opinion it's very valuable to make sure your contract is not assignable let me just say too I have no doubt that if a boxing promoter or a manager comes across this video they might be cringing right now because they'll say oh man I hope the person I'm dealing with doesn't think about a non-assignability clause <laughs> right because all I'm saying is understand the minute the contract is assignable you're giving up a lot of power over your career to the other contracting party. Right? Finally, and this is really important, it's as important as everything else. Don't accept any advances on future purses. Don't. Right? It might seem like semantics legally, it's not. You don't want an advance you want a signing bonus. They're two different things. Right? If I get an advance and I sign and then I don't follow through with let's say the second fight or something like that, they're gonna come after me for the advance. Right? More importantly, let's say that second fight I'm supposed to get fifty thousand dollars. Right? And let's get real here. Right? The only guys making millions of dollars in the sport of boxing per event are the superstars. Right? Most of these guys are making not millions, they're making thousands of dollars. Right? So let's say let's say I'm a known fighter, I'm a contender. By the way, the only people making fifty thousand dollars in a fight are either guys who are known because of impressive amateur careers, including the Olympics, right? Or you know, it's contenders, quite frankly. Understand, there's not that much money in boxing. So let's say I'm supposed to make $50,000 for my second fight under the contract. You know what? I want to get paid $50,000. I don't want to hear that I'm actually only going to get paid $25,000 because I've already received $25,000 as an advance on the fight. Right? No, what you want is a signing bonus. The idea is sign with us. We'll give you money that's yours. Not an advance, but money that's yours today. Now, if the promoter or the fighter, excuse me, the manager, says, hey, come on now. I can't give you a signing bonus and then have you get hurt, this is the hurt business, unable to finish the contract or retire on me and then I've given you money for nothing. So what you should do is what the NFL does. <clears throat> Let's say I get a $100,000 signing bonus and let me just point out again, <laughs> good luck getting that unless you are a champion, right? But let's say I get a $100,000 signing bonus. The contract should spell out 
how much I have to pay back if in let's say a five fight deal I only fight one fight I only fight two fights I only fight three fights I only fight four fights etc in other words it should say <clears throat> here's a one hundred thousand dollar signing bonus but it's understood that if you only fight one fight you have to return 80 of the 100. In other words, you get 20 free and clear. Right? Then, for your second fight, it can say, if you fight twice, you only have to return 60 of the $100,000. You get the idea. The point is, part of that signing bonus should vest immediately. Right? It should vest immediately. Then, the contract should spell out how much you have to pay back if you're unable to complete the contract right let's go further very few have this kind of marketing excuse me negotiating leverage but if you happen to be an A-level fighter you can negotiate a liquidated damages provision in other words if I breach this contract how much is the other side entitled to? Right? You know, without proof at trial. That's a good way to limit your damage exposure. Right? It works in tandem with your ability to buy out the contract. Right? These are things, quite frankly, that you need to consider beforehand. I see I'm over 20 minutes. I thought the video would be shorter. I apologize for that. But just think it through and just remember, you want to have your team in place before you start negotiating with those in the industry. Your team should not include up front your potential manager or your potential promoter. Right? You need a team independent of those people because the point is you're going to negotiate with those people, right? Once you find a manager you can trust, then that manager can be part of your team. But understand, you need the team in place before you negotiate the managerial or promotional contract, right? Then, of course, you want to make sure your finances are set up so you have a paper trail. Everything's by check. Everything's been deposited in a bank account that you have access to, right? Because, again, the goal here is to empower you. And of course, your contract should give you as many options as possible. In other words, if you want to get out of the contract, the contract should spell out the protocol by which you can buy out the other side. Right? If, you know, you've signed with people you trust, you want to make sure they can't assign that deal to someone else. Right? And, of course, you want to make sure that you get a signing bonus, not an advance. Don't get suckered. Don't take $100,000 and then hear that you're owed peanuts on the rest of the deal because, of course, the 100 was the advance payment for your future fights. Then you find yourself in against quality competition, and then you, if you do the math, you think to yourself, well, my opponent's making $300,000. Right? I, I'm getting $100,000 for this fight because I accepted it as an advance. You want to think it through. You don't want to make that move. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at richarddwyer.com. Thanks for stopping by.